All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the apps that I use and also the extensions that I use on my production machine. So let's get started. Like I said earlier, this is my production machine. So this is my actual desktop that I use to play games and also edit with. Not like that usual desktop that you see on my channel where it's my workbench and I only have specific apps that I need at that time. But yes, this is my production machine. So to begin, this is Ubuntu 24.04. I was running Arch Linux not too long ago, but I ran into a problem where they updated and basically broke everything. And I was like, I give up. I'm not, I'm not using Arch Linux anymore just because their updates are so cutting edge that if the application doesn't catch up to it, you're gonna lose support for a lot of the applications. And I lost a lot of support for my editor and other stuff that wasn't able to catch up and I wasn't gonna wait another month or two before they actually fixed everything. So yeah, I ended up stopped using Arch Linux and I'm going back to Ubuntu. And luckily for me, Ubuntu 24 just came out. So it came out around in April. So I've been using this about a month or so. I did theme it. And if you guys know me on this channel, I love the Dracula theme and I still stick to it. So this is all Dracula theme. That's why you see the purple and blue. So looking at my file manager, you could see that this is all purple as well. And it's a dark theme. I also got blur working on GNOME. So this gives you the actual like a KDE effect with the blur, which looks pretty cool on this, especially on the terminals and other stuff. This is how I actually operate everything through my machine. Now there are some issues with Flatpak and that's being resolved, but it doesn't stop me from not using it because it's not all the applications that aren't able to be themed through Flatpak, but otherwise it does work really well and it looks really nice. Now to show you my usage, uh, let's go over here and I'll go to usage and you could see over here, I am using just about five point or six gigs of RAM out of 64 gigs of RAM. And this is me running OBS and a few other applications in the background, like my Steam controller and a few other things. But yes, considering with this many things open, it is pretty low. I do get up to like 20 gigs at times when I have a lot of browsers working. If you want to check out the same stats using a system monitor, it's right over here. But yes, overall, it does work pretty well. All right, back to the apps. As far as apps goes, so I do have code OSS, which is basically Visual Studio Code, but open source version. I am running, well, not anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but I was running Dracula theme on this as well. But yes, you could see this is code OSS and it's hooked up to my own uh, Git. So I have all the information over there. Moving on, I do have my DaVinci Resolve. This is my actual editor that I will edit all my videos on. And I do have the premium version. To be honest, it's really not needed but I wanted to be able to use MP4, which is completely useless because I don't use MP4 on the Linux version anyway. So to be honest, you really don't need the premium or the pro version if you're planning to edit the way I do because it really doesn't. Now I do also have Google Chrome and Firefox. So I like to leave two browsers just in case if I'm testing something, I wanna see it on a different environment. So I do have Google Chrome and Firefox, which works really well. And I do have a little bit of transparency and um, blur on the actual browser itself. So it doesn't really bother me too much, but it does. If it gets to the point where it does, I can just deactivate it. Then if you run flat pack stuff, you need these three applications, absolutely. So what we have over here is flat seal, which gives you the permissions to every application that you installed through Flatpak. So if you need to change something over here, you could just add the permission or remove the permission or do whatever you need to do without having to type it out into a terminal. Now, the next thing I have for Flatpaks are flat sweep. So say like you're running an application. In my case, this is Raspberry Pi uh, Imager and I have 1.1 gigs that is occupied in this that I'm not really using. I could just hit clean and it'll delete it, which basically what it is is the image that I downloaded to flash onto the SD card. And if you really want to clear out some saves, you should be using flat sweep because there's going to be more applications as you go along that you could clean out, especially sometimes when you delete an application and it's not fully deleted because it has user data, you can use this to clean that out. Now, if you notice, I'm moving my mouse because I actually have the mouse out kind of a little bit bigger. And if I move it, it will actually show me where my mouse is. It's just something I added as well, but that's also an extension. Now, the last thing for flat pack, I would say is warehouse. Now, Warehouse is another application that actually allows you to control the Flatpak. So normally what happens is Flat Seal does all the permissions. Like if you want to enable certain things, GPU acceleration or permissions to SD cards and stuff like that, that's fine. But in Flatpak, 
if I needed to say heroic game launcher or even freecad I go over here and go to open data files this way I don't have to hunt down for it and if I need to launch the application from here I could just go into a menu and just go open or I could uninstall through here as well so overall I would keep those three applications one for permissions uh, which is flat seal a uh, warehouse and then flat sweep these are the three things I would highly recommend if you're running Flatpak, just so um, you have everything in control instead of, like I said, if you uninstall, sometimes use the data gets stuck there. Now, with that being said, I do have a flat, a lot of Flatpak applications that I install. So going through the next stuff, I do have uh, GIMP, and this is highly modified to make it look like Photoshop. And I am not using Photo GIMP. I'm actually I just modified this myself to make it look like that. And I have other plugins and stuff because I am starting to use GIMP more and I'm trying to get off of the whole Adobe tree. So I've been using a lot of GIMP and I'm, I'm very familiar with Photoshop so I had to keep it this style. But yeah, GIMP is pretty good. Inkscape, FreeCAD you've seen before. And then I have Bottles. Bottles is a video that I actually could link you guys to because I actually install certain things like Notepad++. Levitator, like Levitator is a program that requires 32-bit while Notepad++ is 64-bit. So it helps with managing like windows applications to what runner you want to use say like if you want to use custom runners you could actually use uh, different ones or different architects or whatever it is so it makes its own folder and category and stuff like that into its own and also adds it to your menu so if i need a notepad plus plus i have it right in my regular menu or i could load it up in from here in my library i could launch notepad plus plus through here don't ask me why levitator is actually guilty gear x it's not levitator is actually levitator but they got the wrong icon yeah i use bottles for wine applications separate from what i normally use i still have normal wine that i would type in terminal for just if i have some specifics that i need to install so i'd still have normal wine and going down the list i have Jiglo, which helps me mount my shares every time i boot up my system uh, Raspberry Pi Imager, Lutris for all my games. So here I have games that are not Steam specific like Blizzard or Star Citizen. So I would install them through here. If I have some Ubisoft games, I would install them through here as well. But mostly just these two games, Blizzard and Star Citizen are the two that I add in. Now moving down the list, I also have Heroic Game Launcher, which I don't see over here. Yeah, it's probably on the next page. But I do have Plex to watch my Plex videos. And I have Plex Amp to listen to all my Plex audio, which is a pretty good audio player. And it has visuals and everything. So I would highly recommend if you are going to listen to your Plex stuff, recommend using Plex Amp. I have Power Statistics, which comes with the system. Rust Desk, which I do remote uh, sessions with. Software and Update, Software Updater. I don't know why I have like so many of these. And then one of my newest favorite apps that I have is called Alpaca. So this is Alpaca which actually runs off your GPU, but it's a GUI version to run AI locally. So if I say I needed, uh, I have a picture of an orange. I'm gonna open that up. What is this picture? And it'll basically scan this image and tell me what's going on. Or I could talk to it like, I think because I'm running OBS, it's giving me an error. Either way, this is my local AI instance. So if I wanted to go through it, I can actually just use it. And you could just download uh, any chat model you want going through that list i could just hit download and you can select the versions that you want so yeah it's a very good and easy to use locally based ai or chat ai if you want to use that so yeah if you want to check this out it's pretty cool i use it to like little stuff here and there that i ask around and obviously i have steam i have a uh, tor browser vlc media player and then my steam controller which operates my sometimes it takes two times to run i actually from here, I think I could actually start it up from background apps, Steam controller through there. And so this is how my Steam deck looks right now. It's not fully complete yet because I just started playing around with this. But yes, it does get all my stuff that I need onto my Steam deck. And as you can see, just this little preview image, I just makes it so much easier for me to configure. But yes, this is called uh, Steam controller and through flat, flat pack as well. And I've ran through a few applications. This is probably by far the, the one that I like the most because you, there's actual plugins that you could download for specific things like uh, OBS if you need a hell divers or home assistant it has plugins that you can install and just add the action into that specific location and it'll get it to work so yeah I, I really recommend using this if you if you have a stream deck we then have heroic game launcher which allows me to run my epic game GOG Amazon and a few others so I do have a bunch of games here 
uh, from all three different categories. But but yeah, I have a lot of games from many different categories, either through Amazon Prime or GOG. So yeah, I do use Heroic Game Launcher for those games that I don't have on Steam. Another thing I would recommend if you are using uh, aftermarket mouse is Piper. Piper allows you to configure your mouse. So right now I'm using my Logitech that has like all these buttons that you need to program. And Piper is a program that allows you to like modify whatever you need. Uh, if you want the LEDs to change or the button combination. So yeah, I use Piper for this as well. So if you are using any aftermarket mouses, Piper is another application you might need. And moving down the list, we have OBS, Notepad++, which I showed you earlier, Levitator, which is another Windows application. And then we have our shutter program, which is a screenshot program. I don't like the GNOME screenshot because I can't draw on it. So if I use uh, shutter through my hotkey, I could select what I want. And from here, if I need to add something, I could edit the photo and add like an arrow, an arrow or something like that, save that. So yes, so I do use Shutter as uh, for my uh, screenshot programs. So that's about it for the applications I have. I might still have a few that's not showing up on my menus that I might use. But again, I've only been running 24 for about a month. So I'm pretty sure there is a few apps that are on here that I do not have. Now moving on to the good stuff, which I would say is the extension manager. This is all the extensions that I'm currently using to make everything look pretty. So first we start off with Astro Manager, which is not my ideal uh, system manager, to be honest. I'd rather just use the program either usage or my favorite, which is Freon, but Freon is not available for GNOME 46 yet. So uh, you can use Astro. A lot of people say this is good. To me, honestly, it gives me a lot of information that I don't really look at all the time. The only thing I would really look at is CPU usage and possibly network usage and memory, but that's about it. So, and it clutters up my menu, so I kind of just hide it and I don't even remember that I have it. Free on, in the case, is only one icon, so if you've seen it on my other videos, it's one icon that shows me all the stats I need in one bubble, versus this, I have to highlight every bubble, and I'm not a super huge fan, but it works. Now, next up, we have Blur My Shell. Now, Blur My Shell gives me this blur when you open menus, as well as the blur that I have on these applications. So setting it up, you can actually modify everything here. So here it shows you like the blur steps and all that stuff, you can modify this. And then what I go to is per application basis, and then you can blur the overview and then say like GIMP, I don't want it to be blurred. So you can add blacklist applications, but you could change all this, so opacity and everything. So if I want this to be like really opaque and you can see through it that's where you would change it or you would go high so i kind of keep like around 220 something and then you could do brightness the sigma of the blur this is like no blur a little bit just to give that like cool feeling especially if you have it on your file manager and then i just like the blurry effect from kde that i'm so used to that I like to bring it over to GNOME and I was looking for this forever, but yeah, Blur My Shell does this. A lot of people don't, they know actually Blur My Shell does this. They're trying to look for Blur Me or Blur something else. But yeah, Blur My Shell does this. Next we have, so Burn My Windows is what you get the effects from. So right now I have it on Hexagon. So if I want it on fire, I disable this, turn on fire. And if I open a new app, you're gonna see fire come in. This is where you can spice up your windows uh, from opening. But I kind of like the hexagon because it gives you like the futuristic. I like the flexagon so much better. That's what I'm sticking with. But yeah, that looks really cool. You can make it come in. You can set it up so it uh, it comes in much faster or slower, whatever you want to do. But I like half a second, which is pretty good. Then we have caffeine, which is a must have. Caffeine allows you to keep the computer running so it doesn't fall asleep. If you're in the middle of watching a movie or whatever it is or... Something that might turn off your screen, you just leave caffeine on. Like right now I'm recording, my computer will still not know that I'm recording and then it'll probably put it to sleep if I walk away for like 15 minutes. So yeah, caffeine is another one. Then we have dash to panel, which is what you see on the bottom. If you don't use dash to panel, it sticks with the original look where you have this on the top and then you have the sidebar and everything the dock on the left hand side i like my menus down on the bottom because i'm so familiar with looking down because of windows so that's what i do another thing we have is called gnome 4x improvements this is just visually for me so what this does is basically makes this window 
Do you see this thumbnail up here where you can select to a different screen? This is already 200% bigger. So imagine if it's 100%, it's much smaller like this way right over here. So it's really small and then it, it, uh, you could do a few other settings in here where you can hide the search and restore desktop thumbnail background and stuff like that. So the main purpose that I use this for is the 200%. That's it. So that's another, it's a little improvement for the GNOME shell. So I can see this a little bit better. So if you use this a lot, I tend to switch screens a lot. If I'm editing on one screen while it's compiling or whatever it is, I will switch to the next screen and then do my other things on it. So yes, I use that a lot. Moving down the list, we have GS Connect. Highly, highly, highly recommend either KDE Connect or GS Connect. If you don't use this on your phone now, I highly recommend using it. So GS Connect, allows you to connect your Android phone. So I had to disable because I have notifications coming in to be used with your computer. So basically if I have GS Connect connected right now, I could actually enable or disable certain things. I was playing some music before and I could hit play and it'll play the music and I have connection to and from my device. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you what I have right now. So this is my phone right over here and I have uh, clipboard sync, media player, mouse and keyboard and volume control as well as receive and send files which I use a lot of. One of the biggest things that I do like a lot is the notifications. Now my computer sends a lot of notifications that I don't need to know because I already have Discord installed on my phone so I don't want a double notification. So I disable certain notifications because I don't need to see it but otherwise I do send it notifications. It helps a lot, especially if you're compiling something and you need to send a notification that's done. So example, here if I was to go into LS and then I would actually noti notify send test or actually done. This will actually send this message. This guy says notify send done and it's still there. This will actually send my message to my phone, so if I have a long running task, say like if I'm compiling a kernel or something like that, and it takes about 40 minutes, but I don't wanna sit in front of my computer and I could do something else, I will actually add this little command uh, and they'll send me a notification once it's done. Now, I originally did have it where it would send me, anytime I use the terminal, it would send me a notify, but that got a little bit irritating every time I would do something. So I personally just took that off and decided, hey, I'll just type this in when I need to. But you can set it up. If it's a long running command, uh, it will actually automatically notify send, but I disable that. So yes, this does help a lot. And also, if I need to use KS Connect for like some remote input, so here's my phone, I got remote input going in, and now I could actually control my mouse through my phone and use it as a media player as well. So if I want to double click there, you can see I'm basically like it's a touchpad on my phone to my computer and vice versa. I could actually use my computer to control my phone if I need to. So a lot of the times I don't have my phone on me or I have it away. So, and I'm in front of my computer more than I am using my phone. So this helps a lot. Just telling me what's going on with my phone or I could do something with my phone, etc., etc. So if you never played around with this, I highly recommend. I don't, I, I almost did a full video on GS Connect but I felt like I could just include it into this video. But yes, GS Connect is highly recommended. If you're not using it, try it. Give it a try for like a week or a month. I'm telling you, I could. the best thing that I could do is when I'm about to leave my house and I completely forgot to shut down my computer or put it to sleep, I could use GS Connect to do that. Moving down the list, we have Inpatient. Inpatient is just stuff like you could speed scale. So if I open or close windows, you could change the scaling of this. Default is like one second, I just change it to half so everything feels a lot faster when I'm just like opening stuff. So it doesn't, I don't have to wait that one second because that one second is, that half second is used because of my windows opening. If that makes sense, like it still balances out to one second because it takes half a second for this windows to load because of the visuals. So impatient, impatience will balance out my burn my windows. So that's why I have that mainly. Oh, another good application that I have is something called mini view. Mini view is, say like if I'm doing something crazy on my terminal. So let's run the program Hollywood. All right, so this is, if you ever seen like movies or TV shows and it's stuff running in the background, it's running Hollywood. So that's why it's called. It has like a lot of these prompts that's going on. It's doing its own thing. Anyway, point being is if I hold Shift F12, 
now I have a picture in picture of that terminal. Now, if this terminal was like in another monitor and you don't see it on my desktop anymore, it's still over here in the picture in picture mode. Long story short, I love picture in picture mode from elementary and I've been trying to find a way to get it back, which GNOME does have, which is called this mini view. And scrolling up and down will show you like, this is my OBS. This is the actual thing that you're seeing right here. And this is my right here. It was minimized, but you could still see it, it was loading. And then my back to my terminal again. So long story short, this mini view, oh uh, look, I just got email from my phone and it sends the notification up to the top. So I'm gonna disable this for now, but the point is um, mini view allows me to switch the running tasks into a picture picture mode. So I'm actually able to see what's going on if I'm monitoring something or if I have something like full screen, I have something here I could tell like, oh, okay, I'm waiting for this to finish while I'm doing whatever. So I do like that, especially if I'm trying to read a guide from the website, I could I'll put it as a picture in picture and then read the guide as I'm doing some stuff in terminal. So yes, shift F12 enables and disables that, scroll up and down with mouse wheel to change windows. And there's a few other hotkeys that you can play around with. Moving down, we have paper WM is something that is like a tiling specific. So if I do this, you could see that it tiles everything for me and I could like move up and down and there's like arrows over here. So I don't really use this unless I need to tile my windows. And the worst part is when I do tile everything, you could see it actually uh, locks it into place. Like this window's now stuck like this. I don't like to use it as much, but when I need to, I could enable it. Um, I rather prefer the one from Pop! OS because I like the Pop! OS tiling. So I do have this disabled, but if you want to play around with this, you can actually get it to really specific on how everything works. And I don't have time to mess around with this. So I do have a uh, uh, disable, but if I ever want to set it up, I can. Uh, next thing we have is OS tweaks. This gives you all the extra quick settings that you see over here, like do not disturb, night light. And then my, if I have browsers listening to audio, like if I have YouTube or I have Hulu or whatever it is, you'll see more and more of this. And I could specifically raise and lower the volume for specific applications. And also my notifications now come down here instead of where my clock is. So th this stays everything all over in one spot. And if I have background apps, I could actually go into background apps as well. This is all the OS quick tweaks that gives me all these options that I'm able to play around with. Next, we have user themes, which gives me the ability to use Dracula as a user theme. And then we have Wiggle. Wiggle is the mouse thing that uh, I show you. Like if I move my mouse, my mouse gets larger. That's Wiggle. And that's about it. The rest, window call, desktop, all these are, these are all default with GNOME. So I don't really have to go through these. You get these automatically as soon as you install this. But those are the apps that, those are the uh, extensions that I use for this computer to make it look like and operate the way I want to. So highly recommend a lot of these, especially blur my shell, blur my windows, uh, dash to panel, and the mini view. Mini view is really good. And also the OS tweaks, uh, quick setting tweaker. And that is about it. That's all the madness that I have going on with my desktop. I'm pretty sure down the road, maybe another month or two, it'll, I'll have way more applications than this. But for now, everything that I need is here. I'm able to play my Star Citizen. I'm playing my Steam games. Uh, I'm able to get my production going. So I'm good right now. And staying on something like Ubuntu 24, knowing that when I do do an upgrade, it won't break some of my stuff. I'm very content right now. The biggest takeaway from this video right now is some of the apps that I'm using as well as the GNOME extensions uh, I recommend checking out. So yeah, and definitely check out GS Connect or KDE Connect. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.